In this video, we would be looking at five critical diagrams to help you increase your chess knowledge. And today's topic is pawn tension, and it is one of the most critical and exciting topic to discuss about chess. So I don't want to waste any further time. At the end of the video, your knowledge about the pawn structure will simply increase by hundred percent. So let's start. So we have the diagram number one on our board. We are playing with the white pieces, and black plays the move d5. And after g5, white is already having many ideas, many options. So pause the video and try to think which option will you try to go for. Okay, so already after d5, there are a couple of options available for white. White can either go for capturing the pawn, white can either go for pushing up the pawn, or white can go for any other move like developing the pieces. First, discussing about the best move. Here, the best move is to play the move e5. You kick the knight, and once the knight is kicked, now you play the move d4. And after d4, basically white is having more space in the center. Second, now black pieces like bishop, the bishop on c8, the knight on d7, the bishop on g7 is simply badly placed because black is not really having that much good space to put the pieces nicely. Whereas white is already having too much space in the center, white can happily develop his pieces, bishop f4, knight d2, rook e1, and white is overall pretty happy. Whereas going back, at the place of e5, if you thought of capturing the pawn, it's already a bad move, because black is simply going to capture the pawn on d5. Now, thanks to the pawn on c5, black is already having more space in the center, and now black can at the same time develop his, develop his pieces pretty nicely. So already speaking up, e into d5 is already a bad move. If you play something like simply developing your knight, this time black is also having a very strong move, d4 in this position. And after d4, it simply gives black too much space in the center, and the idea could be already to capture the pawn on c3, followed by capturing the pawn on d3, and or at the last case, the last resort can be to even play the move e5, having more space in the center, and black is already very comfortable, whereas white is having very less space. Uh, for his pieces to get developed. So it's already a good idea in this particular position to go for the move e5 followed by d4 to have a good position. So this was the diagram number one. So now let's move on to the diagram number two. Okay, so we have the diagram number two on our board. Again, we are playing with the white pieces and here black plays the move d5. And after d5, at first glance, it looks like a bit complicated position because white is already having many options. But at the same time, this position is also very interesting. So try to pause the video and try to find the best continuation from the white side. Okay, so overall, talking about what are the options available for the from the white side. After d5, white can either go for capturing the d5 pawn, the d5 pawn with the c pawn, or the d5 pawn with the e pawn, or play something else like moving the either of the pieces. So maybe I would say there are four options available. So first, discussing the best move once again. The best move is to simply capture on d5 pawn with the e pawn. And the whole point here is, after c takes, you will notice that the bishop on g2 is simply now opened up to the a8 square. And now black can't really capture the pawn or push the pawn because the rook would definitely would be hanging on a8. And now I really want to capture the pawn. But after takes, 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 black is already pretty better because white is already having a passive position, not much space in the center, a weak d3 pawn. And black is already better in the position. Whereas going back here, if I somehow remove this knight defender by playing the move bishop g5, which is the best move. And after bishop g5, now my idea is to simply capture the f6 knight followed by capturing the pawn on d5. And now it is actually unstoppable from the black side, and now white is already having a winning position. For example, h6, takes, takes. And after cd5, the like I can even push the pawn, or I can even go for playing knight d5, and white is convincingly better. So in back, that's exactly what happens. So after d5, the best move is to capture the, the pawn with the e pawn, opening up the bishop. So if you thought of, maybe seen to b5, it's not really working because d4. 
and now you lose the piece so it's easily rejected and coming to the next option and the most obvious obvious option for any human to play is to discuss all captures what's happened but as i said black is already very comfortable because white is already having an isolated queen pawn so takes takes and here it looks like to play d4 a very interesting move definitely it's nothing wrong with this particular move but it doesn't give you the best advantage as we've seen in the game after d4 it is a move that you have to calculate a bit deeper after after a thorough calculation after takes takes in the end of the position you will get this position where after takes takes why it is having the slight advantage because of a black's weak pawn structure and the bishop is comparatively much stronger than the knight so definitely we can say that white is much better but yeah going for this option is definitely not a wrong idea but you need to get a good calculation idea about it whereas what happened in the game was pretty interesting as i said to capture with the e pawn opening up the bishop on g2 and then bishop g5 kicking the, removing the defender capturing the pawn and now you are simply a material up and a winning position so this was the second diagram a very interesting one so now let's move on to the third diagram okay so we have the third diagram on our board this time we are playing with the black pieces and white plays the move d5 pushing up the pawn and here's my question what will you do if you are playing with the black pieces pause the video and try to think okay so after d5 <clears throat> many players would like to maybe capture the pawn maybe push the pawn but definitely the candidates move are definitely to consider capturing the pawn pushing up the pawn or maybe playing something else like short castle the best move in this position is to simply short castle because after short castle like if white captures the pawn like if he pushes the pawn we can already capture the pawn if white captures the pawn we can already capture the pawn with the queen and now already rook d8 black is pretty happy and after short castle black's idea is already to get the rook into the game and maybe then threatening to even capture the pawn on d5 so this is the best approach whereas if you try to go for capturing the pawn it's not the best because here at the place of capturing the pawn which is the bad move white is simply going to push the pawn and the whole point here is after maybe you try to move the knight takes takes because the queen and the bishop is attacked at the same time so you can have to take take and this position is already better for white because white's queen is nicely centralized white is having the bishop pair white is thanks to the pawn on e5 white is having even more space in the center and we can already conclude that this is much easier to play with the white pieces and white is already having a good position so that is the whole reason capturing the pawn is not the good idea and even if you try to push the pawn white is pretty happy to be true because white can play already bishop e3 white's having the d pass pawn a connected pass pawn more space in the center free flow of development of the pieces already maybe f4 in the future white is already better so that's the reason short castle is the best move doing nothing simply fo focusing on the developing of the pieces because white really can't do much achieve much in this position so this was the diagram number 3 so now let's move on to the diagram number 4 okay so we have the diagram number 4 on our board this time we are playing with the white pieces and black plays the move d5 here's my question pause the video and try to find the best continuation from the white side okay so what are the options available you can capture the d5 pawn with the c pawn with the e pawn or you can even push the pawn to e5 maybe or you can or else you can simply develop your one of the minor pieces so <clears throat> the best continuation is to simply play cd5 black half to take and now we can play simply e5 and after knight to e8 white can already push the pawn to d4 and now white is already better white's idea is to play f4 knight to e2 So basically white is having more space in the center black is having less space so less mobility for black pieces and white is pretty happy in this position whereas going back in this position after d5 if we play something else like ed5 takes takes and after takes 
Like definitely black can't really capture the d5 pawn. We are assuming that we are already better. But here black can already play knight a6. Idea is to play knight c7 and simply capture the d5 pawn. And then d3 pawn would be simply an isolated pawn and black is pretty happy. And if you capture the pawn with the knight this time, now black can simply take, bishop takes and you are thinking that you are having a good position, but knight c6. Now what's happening, you have already, you have only developed your bishop, whereas black castle developed the bishop, the knight, black can even go for playing bishop maybe to f5, putting pressure over here, e6, capturing the pawn, black is already better. I would always recommend don't play with the fire. So that's why capturing the d5 pawn with the e pawn is not a good idea. If you push the pawn first at the place of capturing the d5 pawn, black can play knight g4 and the whole point here is if you push the pawn to d4 this time, now black is having this extra option, a very interesting one. Black can first play c5, a very interesting option. Basically, if you capture the c5 pawn, you lose the e5 pawn. And if you capture the d5 pawn, black can already capture the d4 pawn. And in the next move, black is prepared to capture the e5 pawn and black is already better. So that's why e5 is not the best move. And for example, the most obvious way to calculate is to simply first decide if we capture everything. But as I said, black can play knight a6, knight c7 and black is pretty happy. So this was the fourth diagram, a very interesting one you must find. First takes, push the pawn, have a nice center and white is better. So this was the fourth diagram so now let's move on to the final diagram of the day. Okay, so we have the fifth and the final diagram of the day. We are playing with the white pieces and here black played the move knight to a6. Here's your chance. Pause the video and try to think how will you try to continue the position if you are playing with the white pieces. Okay, so only many options are available as I said. The most obvious option is to look to capture the pawn. And if you found the move, congratulations, this is the best move. And after takes takes, here's my question. What are you really going to continue? If you found the move, e5. It's the brilliant move and it's the exact reason we are capturing the c6 pawn. So after e5, basically if black captures the pawn, after knight takes, black is already having a bad pawn structure and white is better. If black moves the knight, we can now, uh, there is no need to capture anything. Just simply keep on developing your piece now. Knight a3, bishop b7, queen e2. Because if black captures the pawn on e5, we can already capture. Black would be having a bad pawn structure. So just keep on developing your pieces. Now develop your bishop, get your rook into the game, and white is better. So this is how you should continue the position. And at the start, when I said you should capture the c6 pawn, it's generally speaking, it's not really a good idea to capture this pawn because when you're capturing the c6 pawn, you're basically trading your strong d5 pawn with the b7 pawn which is definitely not a good idea but in this case if you found the move e5 this is this is the exact reason this exchange on c6 helps white because of the e5 move and white is better if you at the place of capturing the pawn if you play something like c4 definitely it's not a bad move it's completely fine move and a good move after c4 you are basically controlling the center your idea is to play knight c3, you are having more space in the center and white is better. There is nothing wrong with this move. Or even if you found knight c3, anything, nothing is wrong with this move. White is better and you can perfectly play this position. But the whole point here is to be flexible, keep looking for tactics, idea, calculation and you will eventually find the move e5. And yeah, this is the way to find the best move. So this was the fifth diagram, a very interesting one. So by discussing these five critical diagrams, if you learned anything new today, make sure to like the video, share this video with everyone and make sure to subscribe to our channel if you are new to our channel. It's free for you, but it helps us to motivate to make more videos like this. So I'm going to come up with these exciting videos like this. So till then, stay tuned and keep watching One Shot Shells.